What is everyone? Welcome to the Nerd On Update. Woo! The weekly show where we talk about the stuff in the news that excites or interests us the most. Uh, and then we answer questions from you, the people. Um, since we don't introduce the introduce, we don't introduce, introduce ever. or quattro the guests. <laughs> Never. Uh, I'll, or I'll or pass, the hosts at all. I'll pass it off to Tom to start us off. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Um, so uh, the first bit of news, where where is it? Where is my... <laughs> Where is my thing if you're not watching it on the live? And then also where we post it again on YouTube. Uh, I am the DC boy mm-hmm. here, resident. Um, so I'm bringing you some of that stuff from that corner of the world. Um, first and foremost, uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods cast uh, Lucy Liu um, along with Helen Ooh. Mirren as the antagonist of that film. So we'll see the Shazam Lee go against uh, these two, I think, time-tested, wonderful actors um, so it's interesting. It's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, David F. Sandberg, the director of the last film, will be writing and directing. I think writing and directing um, uh, this dope, film, dope. and dope. has been uh, chock full of all the fun uh, trolley bits, um, showing uh, uh, shots of the script, um, whether I mean, they're real or not. His name is from Pony Smasher, right? <laughs> yeah, Pony Smasher on YouTube, um, and. Uh, I there there's a one wonderful funny video that he posted like him at DC headquarters walking through the the hallways into his office and he flips open the script and it's the last page and there's a line that says maybe the Justice League was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was like no, but he's such a good troll. I think uh, the internet is maybe a better the place. Justice with League is the friends we made along the <laughs> way. Um, and uh, with that, um, we'll move on to the next part of the of of, uh, of the DC Corner world, which is uh, Justice Con. Um, uh, had its event over the uh, this past weekend, and uh, it's a uh, for those who don't know, it's a convention purely around uh, Zack Snyder and his work, uh, created by fans. Um, uh, the uh, these three wonderful women. Um, who who just talk about the material. So it started out first time last year, and it was talking about the release of the Snyder Cut. And now this year, we were able to actually talk about the film. Um, and it had a guest appearance by Chris Terrio, who was recently in the news for popping off, talking about uh, what happened on the set. And they talked about several things. They talked about things like Chris Terrio like wrote things that like Josh uh, that Josh that Zach um, <laughs> wanted to have in the film. And uh, Chris was like, I don't know how we do this, but we'll write it. And one film, one one sequence that he talked about was particularly the end with the Flash uh, and running. Um, and uh, he said, like, that's a pure cinema moment. And they talked about, like, what titles that they would have done for BVS, uh, DOJ, because uh, there was a lot of hierarchy in that play where um, Chris Terrace said, like, I would have written it something, like, more poetic of, like, Son of Sun, Night of Night. Um, because we had Man of Steel, Son of Sun. So I was like, there's a lot of interesting things. And um, Zach kind of like laughed. And, because you know, Zach is a, you know, uh, he plays it off where he's like, I was, I don't care what the title was. Like, I was like, I kind of cared what the title was. But like at a certain point, like I, I knew we were stealing this movie away from Warner Brothers <laughs> to tell. So I can't believe we just got, got away with doing that. Um, but they talked about uh, Wayne T. Carr. If you don't know that name. That is an that is uh there was um uh concept art of our John Stewart. And so a lot of people mm. heard Travante Rhodes, but Wayne T. Carr it was the actor who played John Stewart. And so the end cameo, I won't say who or what, whatever, was going to have um John Stewart joined by Kilowog to talk to our final hero at the end. <sighs> so um, but Zach was very upfront, said, Hey, we're shooting this on my driveway, just to let you know. But like there is a good chance this won't be in the film. And Wayne T. Carr said, totally cool. So it's out in the open. It's there for the world. Um, and uh, oh, another thing came into illumination, which was, um, I, forget ex- I forget the exact time code, but they talked about like, hey, was this on purpose? So in Batman vs. Superman, if you haven't watched it, spoilers, but uh, Superman dies. Um, at uh, two, uh, two hours, 38 minutes, and 55 seconds, something like that. And uh, what? in Zack Snyder's Just League, he dies at two hours, 38 minutes, and 55 seconds. He comes back. And so it's like, why are these two the exact same thing? And Zach, you know, very coy, said, like, um, 
it'd be a very big coincidence if it wasn't, you know, probably a, like a biblical scripture. And if you look in in the Bible, then it's the exact line of Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Um, so there's a lot of these like cool revelations. I recommend everyone to go watch it on YouTube. But um, yeah, uh, the big news from that in particular was that uh, the question was asked like, if Warner Brothers wanted to bring back the Snyderverse, would the two come back on? And they said yes. Um, but they're not the keys of that kingdom. So they very much understand okay. where they play and all that stuff. But Ain't it the truth? Yeah. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. there, the, the, uh, there is going to be an event, hopefully, to have IMAX screenings of Justice is Grey version at Universal City Walk coming in June. Um, and then also another screening later on in October. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's all the DC stuff for me. Uh, who would like to go next? Uh, I'll go. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm just gonna do the the one uh, bit of news that I unfortunately um, woke up to the other day. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. good. I need to know these things. <laughs> uh, Helen McCrory, who played uh, a lot of different roles in her life, but my personal favorite, Aunt Paul from Peaky Blinders, yeah, uh, passed away at 52 uh, from cancer this week. Um, super sad it to me hard. because um, obviously season six got delayed. Filming, um, they went back into production recently. I don't, th- I don't know if she was a part of it at all, um, but it's just definitely going to change the trajectory for the TV show as a whole. But also, yeah. uh, it's just heartbreaking because she was a wonderful actress. She was a powerhouse on that show. Um, and also seeing everybody's her- posts, like just actors from all of the things that she's been in, and just like, yeah, she just seems like she was just a dope person. Yeah, like a really. Cool. I mean, her uh, her husband, uh, Damian Lewis, who I'm also a very big fan of from like Band of Brothers and stuff like that, um, had a very heartfelt uh, message that he he was the one who announced it to everyone on on Twitter. And um, I'm just heartbroken by it. She's probably my uh, in my top three favorite characters on that show by number far two, for sure. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I had her as my number two actually. Um, but uh, you know, definitely. Lots of love out to to uh, Damian Lewis and the rest of her family and and her show family as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peaky Blinders. It's a huge loss uh, to the acting world, and um, I wish them all the best. Yeah, yeah. So just bummed out, man. Yeah, bummed super, out. Super, super a, bummed. Yeah. I literally woke Young. up and and my wife heard me from the other room. Just go fuck. First yeah. thing in the morning, she's like, "Are you okay? Did you stub your toe? What happened?" And I was like, "No." Worse. That's what happened to me too. I, <laughs> uh, Bonnie heard no. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Same. Same. Um, but that's my news. Um, well, and not, and for something pretty much the same. <laughs> um, this week, the company Decurion, I'm, I hope that's, I'm saying that right. Doesn't matter, but they made a huge announcement that was a strike to the film industry that, that they are closing the doors of Arclight Cinemas and Pacific Theaters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know if Arclight is a a, a internet or like a national one, but in LA, there's like several locations, um, including the world famous Cinerama Dome. Um, <coughs> if you've seen pictures of Hollywood, you've probably seen pictures of the Cinerama Dome. Um, for me, uh, I'm more hit by Pacific theaters because one of the theaters that I went to growing up, uh, it was a Pacific theaters down in San Diego. And, um, <coughs> it's, it's hard news to hear. And, uh, yeah, filmmakers man. are up and not up in arms. Isn't really quite the right term, but they are speaking out and just saying how, there was an article done by the LA Times. Uh, basically, the headline is the clickbait. I can't imagine Hollywood without ArcLight. And then it's just a bunch of filmmakers explain why this loss matters. And it's people like Edgar Wright, um, a whole bunch of other um, filmmakers of just... I mean, the Cinerama Dome uh, alone is is such a... It's like if the Grauman went down. Yeah. And the Grauman, I yeah. think, is now AMC. Is it AMC? I forget. I think so, yeah. 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 Um, so it's, I mean, we've been talking the past few months of just the state of even just the theater industry. And uh, 
what's going to happen. And they tried. I think even just a couple of weeks ago, they were making posts about like things coming out to theater soon. And this took everybody by like, oh, yeah, what? Yeah. So, yeah, <clears throat> that it's it's tough because like you hear about the AMCs and the Regals and stuff like that and the Cinemarks. And you're kind of thinking about, like, if those chains go away, then that's just, like, a lot of jobs. And I think that's kind of, like, where the heart should kind of be of it. Of course, like, we want to try to capture the joy for, you know, the art to be displayed. Um, but, like, when you have things like Arclight and uh, Pacific Theaters where they're not the bigger known thing, yeah. but they're still staples amongst their local destinations, um, those are kind of like, well, we're kind of taking away, like, these landmarks now. Um, and landmarks that... I think for better or worse terms, um, never really uh, were detrimental to um, the communities. If anything, they were like hubs for the communities. I mean, I just want to, we don't normally do this all the time, but somebody talked about in the chat of like surprise drive-ins haven't been bigger, but I'm, I'm completely floored that they have kind of reawoken in this. I went to two. Yeah. Pandemic. I've been seeing so many people post. There's also like events that companies have been creating of like like recently there was like a Stranger Things drive-in event. Yeah. Well, I would also um, like to point out that Los Angeles is very unique in that sense that we are the hub of film and so entertainment the fact capital that, of the world. That drive-ins and pop-ups for movies have come up yeah, here that's is, true. is pretty unique as opposed to the rest of the country. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Um uh, so yeah, so uh, I, there's a part of me that, I mean, even some filmmakers said that they're in denial. Like, there, there's a part of me that is kind of in denial, like, because I, I have a, I know that some people in the industry are trying to figure out how to make this not a thing. Like, how I, can we I, save it? Like, my idea is uh, you do like, um, like a Legion films. You make it where it's a public, everyone could buy a share. And oh, interesting. You could do, you could buy it a very small, like obviously the smallest amount, but obviously like if that hasn't worked, and I don't know everything about the stock market, but like Legion M is a quote unquote fan owned company, mm. and so you could literally just put in your share and buy it. Like now we're part of the company, and so it's like, I mean, give, it's, it's kind of like donate to a freeway where it's like you can get it named after. Oh you. yeah, yeah. Adopt a freeway. Yeah, adopt a freeway. Uh, I'm. I mean, obviously, I'm. I'm crossing my fingers for QT to come through. Because I know Tarantino. he loves, he but, loves that place and, and so. Nolan too. And yeah. I'm like, it, it's and so that's kind of the fun thing where I've seen where like Josh, I think you kind of you know hit the nail on like the the global idea. But like where I'm seeing it on like the smaller uh, on Twitter and all that stuff is like all these writers are like I'm just waiting for all these millionaire filmmakers to come out with their you know and say these films. And in my mind, I'm like, you're literally scre- like in the screenwriting category in Twitter. So like, aren't you one of those filmmakers? Isn't it? So hasn't like, Tarantino said idea? that the Cinerama Dome is like his favorite movie theater or something? There's like a that? lot of stories of people seeing him there. He used to hang. I, he does hang out there all the time. Um, in fact, he even had made sure that his road show for Hateful Eight went through there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he lives in that area. So, and he's put it in his movies as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm hoping that he's getting a group together to. To yeah. save this thing. Where's the so. Scorsese? Where's the camera? Yeah. Where's the you know? Y'all yeah. talk about film a whole lot, and we love yeah. you for it. But let's let's you gotta vote with your dollars. Baby. Vote yeah. with your dollars. I've been saying it. Um, yeah. Is that yeah. all the news? Um, yeah, that's all the news with the three of us. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tom, right. can you uh, do me a favor and bring up your mic? No. Y- yes. No. Yes. Is that better? Is that a, a little better? Yeah, With thank you. A little bit more. Yeah, cool. yeah. thank okay, you. Yeah, wherever, right. wherever you want, baby. Uh, what questions we got today, Tom? I feel, oh, so, yeah. so, I feel like this is such a relaxed episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 been an interesting week, uh, but uh, we're yeah, in a mellow so, place. Yeah, we're like, in a mellow look at place me right now. I'm just like, what's what's up next, man? Uh, so the next part of our show is in which we answer questions from you, the audience, whether you are listening on. Wherever you listen, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen, or if you're on YouTube watching the uh, the the post video, or if you're live on our Twitch, nerdon.tv backslash Twitch, we answer questions from you. Uh, you can submit them at uh, sending an email to questions at nerdon.tv. You can also go to nerdon.tv backslash questions. Uh, you can also join our Discord, nerdon.tv backslash Discord. There are channels there. And if you are a member of the Nerd On Nation, powered by Patreon, uh, you get what we call the Nerd On Nudge, where we put your questions at the front of the line. And you can ask questions like, 
Brad, Brad, asks, been playing a little Bioshock recently, and I was wondering which fictional self-proclaimed utopia would be the worst to live in? Um, self-proclaimed, fictional self-proclaimed utopia would be the worst to live in. Handmaid's Tale? Ooh. Isn't that like the absolute worst? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it's quote unquote a utopia, right? It's quote unquote peace has been established. And that's yeah. the thing where it's like, it has to be like, it can't be like the zombie apocalypse. Like peace isn't established yet. So a utopia. But that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, uh, um, oh my God. What's it called? Not the matrix. Uh, uh, oh. Equilibrium. Yeah. Equilibrium. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that we all go into like fix. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> but also, the Matrix so... would be a terrible place to live as well. Yeah. Uh, so but equilibrium. Yeah. Where you have to take pills to, to, S- to suppress. suppress your emotion all the I'll, time. I was going to say the other one, too, is Brave New World, where you have to take yeah. Soma so you can actually get a high. The and island. Feel li- alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, equilibrium, I think, is my answer for that. Yeah. Um, next question? Yeah, next question it comes from Spencer. Shout out. Dark question. What would be oh. your game plan in the Hunger Games? So, you're fighting against 12 or 13 other people based mm-hmm. from different districts. Yes. Right? So depending how, where you lay yourself, obviously you're going to have different skills and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm going breaking it down of like, okay, so you get you get popped up in this world. All your weapons are in the center. You have to run towards it and then run away and then fight off whatever your thing is. Um, my game plan? Um, for, I, I'm, I don't even need a weapon. I'm going to just run away, forge, make a, and, 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 and make a base and then Home Alone slash Predator it up. And, you know, I'm just like, make these traps. Like, come at me. I'll just survive because I'll have the best base, baby. Def- you know, tower defense. Yeah. Yeah. You're going for the <laughs> Buster Bluth method. Neither seen nor heard until everyone's either dead from your traps or killed each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. my technique because I'm just like, there's obviously someone who's going to beat me in hand to hand combat. And, Katniss's big thing was like, I have ranged weapons. Yeah. Like, Would we assume we'd be trained like they were? So they had, yeah, they had like two weeks to prep and they got to yeah. like use their like weapons and stuff like that to the best of their abilities. Yeah. So with a trainer? Uh probably with a trainer, I think. Right. I don't know if they had a trainer. I think th- I think they just had like a rec room where they did by themselves. Oh. I thought they had like a trainer and then like a groomer. Oh. Oh, they they definitely have, yeah, a groomer for sure of like you this is how you act and respond, but like I just remember Katniss. In her like little one shot. Woody Harrelson was her trainer because he had like one or something like that before. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Maybe I'm misremembering that. It's been like 10 years since I've I, seen those movies. I just know mahogany. Um, <laughs> but I would I would just say that my weapon of choice is grenades and I'd run up to that center, pull the pin, and then run away. <laughs> 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 Have everyone else blow up while they're trying to get their weapons. I, I probably would do like I do in Nuclear Winter and Fallout and just literally just hide for a yeah. while until it's down to one person and then just, well, let's just see what happens <laughs> between the two of us. At least I lasted. Yep. Um, yeah, that's usually like when I used to do, I used to do paintball a lot growing up. <sighs> I, I usually would hide like a mofo and snipe. I was pretty yeah. good at it. And then I'd usually be one of the last people left. And I, I was the guy on the care. course, Josh, that would run by you and pop up. Pop up. Like that. You know pop those up. guys who'd be like, I'm just gonna rush this guy. Yeah. Just yeah. Pop, 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 that, pop, was, pop, pop. that was me. Sometimes it wouldn't work out. Ooh. Sometimes, you know, you get popped right back, but got a nice little scar. From I just one thought of those. about the pain of point blank paintball. Oh. Yeah, well, we got we actually got this guy kicked out because he was freezing his his um Paintballs. Yeah, that's, oh. that's 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 being a bastard. Yeah. Um, but I had oh. that that same mentality with uh, dodgeball, where you would run up and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna run up. I run up. I don't hang back. I'm gonna run up and I'm gonna grab a ball, bounce it off, and try to get somebody. But <laughs> oh, um, last next question. Question. Yeah. The next question. Okay. So there's there's a little bit of a visual visual representation for this question because it came into the Discord 
Um, so here's your little if, ad to go check that out. <laughs> yeah. So the the question is, you're sitting in a tree slash Who's deer it blind. It, oh, sorry. It comes from Zell. Um, you're sitting in a tree slash deer blind. You look at your wireless trail cam and see this happen. What do you do? Oh. Um, Terrifying. I'm going to hold it up to the camera. <laughs> sure. So that people know what we're what we're talking about here. Um, so re- read that question again. You're sitting You're- in a tree slash deer blind. You look at your wireless trail clam. Trail clam. That's a thing. Trail and cam. And you see this. What do you do? Nightmares. Yeah. Um, My um, first thing is fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> I for the first nearby. Wait. What do you do? Okay. So it's not what. Ha- okay. Not the first because the first thing I would do is probably. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like freak out like oh shit and then run <laughs> I don't know yeah. they're like looking at the picture it kind of makes me think that they, they would probably have like extra skills maybe they but I don't know if they have climbing skills so I probably it might looks like stay. they know the camera's there yeah um, I, I kind of feel like I would just stay in the deer blind if I die up there okay uh, but my, what, what's deer, a, what's a deer, deer fast a deer blind is kind of like a it's kind of like a, a makeshift uh, treehouse ish oh. uh, that you can set up in a tree. Um, oh, I'm in a tree already. Yeah, you're in a tree. Oh, then I'm. I'm if it's that I kind sit, of deer I blind, there. I sit there. There, well, there are. It depends. There, uh, from my experience, at least from my uncle and my grandpa, who are crazy hunters, and I'll never go with them ever again. Uh, deer blind is actually on the ground, and it's oh. usually camouflaged or whatever. Uh, there can be some in the tree, but I would say. 90% of the time, it's going to be okay. like a hut on the ground Cause, with cause the now, same camo in the background. Got it. Because now I'm reading the rest of the question or the beginning of the question. It's like, you're sitting in a tree. It's like, then I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm up there. I'm chilling. Unless I find out that these teeth can be used to climb, then I'm like, all right, well, then I die. <laughs> well, this just goes, just always use the tree deer blind from now on. Uh, and you'll be good to go. You're already in the tree. Unless they can climb. And then what would you have done anyway if you were on the ground? So Yeah, if I was on the ground, I'd run. If I'm up there... Then I'm chilling. It's kind of like, you know, when you see a bear and you're like, chill. Just chill. If uh-huh. we put the food up high where it can't get to us, then we're fine. Yeah. Um, I have a gun. <laughs> I'd shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going out. <laughs> I mean, that's that's my answer, I guess. I'm, I, I would assume they could find me anyway. If I'm in a tree or not, I'm not going to be able to sleep. I'm going to have to fight these things eventually, so... Let's just shoot him in the head and hope for the best. Yeah. Josh, what was yours? Yeah, I mean, I I honestly would either stay there uh, using my gun wisely or GTFO. And But, I, I mean, when you're hunting, it depends. Like, your car might be super far away or maybe it's close, but probably far away. So I'd probably wait till day if I was true. going to leave. Yep. True. Uh, Very true. So, so there uh, you be, go. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, hey, Tom, I think you've got the next questions. Yes, uh, these are from, the, from chat. the chat. Yes, um, and some of these are from last week. Um, we'll continue from that. The first question is from Talon of the Dragon. At Shut Nerd up. On, plans to return to a, um, or play a future Back uh, back for Blood zombie game? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we, we've been, when we've been talking about it. Back for Blood comes out, it, it's game over. We're going to yeah. be playing that. All day, yeah, every day. For sure. I, yeah. I'm very, like, the thing about Left 4 Dead, I think it's fun because it's like it gives you that multiplayer, but the fact that Le- Back 4 Blood is going to give you a little bit of RPG, so it's like, okay, cool, I get to grind and play off streams or without my friends and just kind of, like, work on my character builds. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody asked I'm- me recently if I was going to get it. It's one of my uh, uh, PlayStation buddies, and I was like, I, I in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to have to get it on two systems. <laughs> So you know what, you know I'm going to have to use Josh? my gift cards. You know what helps, huh. Josh? When you what? don't have a PS5 at all. <laughs> Fair. And so but you, you know have a PlayStation. You know what else helps <laughs> is when you have an Xbox because then you automatically get it for PC. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I don't <laughs> yeah. have a PS5 yet and I can't even buy one. So I'm just like, well, I'll just buy games I can buy for my PC. There right you now. go. Um, next question. Yeah. From, uh, General Gigarax. Um, so what would you guys consider the strangest place you ever had the pleasure or displeasure of visiting? Strangest place you've ever visited. Pleasure um, or displeasure. Strange doesn't necessarily mean bad. Yeah. Yeah, both. Just strange. Christiania strange. in Denmark. 
it's a it's 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 a bizarre little uh, area in Denmark. It's its own city technically, uh, and it's a a group of I forget what the exact title is. It's a group of people who have basically said like we don't want to be a part of the government. We just leave us alone. We want to live here. Uh, so it's like an independent nation kind of thing. And Denmark straight up was like, okay, sure. Just eventually pay us back for the land or something over time. And you, you all live there and, and they don't, it, they don't bother them. Like they got their own set of rules. Like they're also very private when you go in there, there's no pictures allowed. There's no video allowed, all that kind of stuff. Um, bunch of art, really cool art. Um, but it was bizarre. It's bizarre. that There's just this, like you're in Denmark and then you cross through this doorway and then you're in Christiania and its own independent nation within Denmark where Denmark was just like a bunch of artists want to live there let them Josh um I think I'll go for the strangest um and in 2012 that's, that's what the question is the strangest I know well it's <laughs> or the pleasure uh, anyway um <laughs> In 2012, Bonnie and I got married, and for our honeymoon, we went. We did like a road trip of Ireland, mm-hmm. and one of our stops was Ireland's top toilet award. It uh, don't have much more exp- explanation, but it had a <laughs> plaque. It had a plaque that said uh, Ireland's top toilet award. Uh, <laughs> it was awarded uh, runner-up 2002. Uh, it's it's somewhere around the Ring of Kerry. Uh, it's it's on there and Port McGee. Uh, yeah, I just think that is you know why not why not have the top toilet? I've been there, got pictures of it. It's great. It's great. It's the top toilet I've ever seen. What about you, Tom? <laughs> um, strange, strangest place. This is gonna sound very like woke, progressive, weird agenda y, but oh yeah. Um probably about to Santa SJWS? Monica, Santa Monica Beach. <laughs> it's so weird because the thing is if you're not parking on the beach, you're parking in the Santa Monica area, right? So you're parking in a parking structure. And you're probably near like some good shopping areas, right? Yeah. And so yeah. they're there there it's known there's an Apple store there, which I think is like a flag wherever crap store they're called, a uh, flagship store. But, like, so there's, like, rich people there, but then you're walking around, and there's, like, rats on the ground, and then there's, like, homeless people kind of just, like, camping out in places. And then you get further out to the beach, and then it's just a bunch of people who are, like, maybe not from California, maybe not even from America. And so, like, you feel like there's this weird community center, right? Kids Mm -hmm. are screaming, and surfers are doing the thing. People are recording YouTube videos, and so, like, it's all this stuff happening at once. And there's, like, this weird sense of, like, at every turn, like, there's, a like, an Instagram model. And then there's, right next to them, like, yeah. someone who just lost their job. Or someone who, like, has never, ha- like, who got, like, chewed up and spat out by the military. And then and on the pier, one of the best corn dogs I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, and then I mean, I we went to like a film a film festival award show. Yeah, we did, and, and I got my, an award, and it's like okay, and it's like this all happens here, and so it just feels weird. Like I've been to like the Winchester Some great street Mansion. tacos down there. <laughs> like I've been to the Winchester yes. Mansion place, but it's like you're a tourist attraction. You're supposed to do this, right? Yeah, yeah. Here it's like I don't know what this place is supposed to be, and so it's very strange and weird because like the like the first movie set I've ever been on was like in Tent City in LA and it was like okay cool we're in like in in this in, in Skid Row this is like really rough area but like in Santa Monica where it's supposed to be like this is a rich area there's so much disparity going on so it's like it just feels weird it's like it's kind of hard to enjoy it if you're not consistently trying to ignore it like that's where like Disneyland comes in where it's like everyone here paid two hundred dollars to be here so everyone here has some money <laughs> We're like Santa Monica, like it's free to go to the beach, so it's just very weird. Yeah, um, yeah. for me. Um, next question. Yes, um, Crimson Swordsmith. Maybe a question for the future, but due to the pandemic, climate change, and so on, do you guys think that we will see more media being created in places other than places like Los Angeles? Um, I want to go. I, I want to jump in real quick and say that's already happening. Yeah. Um, like if it wasn't for recent legislation in Georgia. Um, I think there would have been yeah, even it was picking more up hard production. in Georgia. Yeah, 
Like, and the fact that, that, like, the quote-unquote no film in Georgia kind of came out, like, Tyler Perry's studio is in Georgia, and it is the largest studio in America. Um, I think it's, like, the third largest in the world. And so, like, Walking Dead gets shot there. Black Panther got shot there. So um, it happens a lot. And, like, my experience with film, like, Boston is a place to shoot. Um, again, Canada, Vancouver. Isn't Austin um, picking up or something like that? Yeah, like, like there's a lot of meccas being built. Like, th- there's a weird sense that, like, Los Angeles has to be the place. But, no, like, it just depends where it is. Like, New York is way better than it is for Los Angeles for, like, live action performance. And I think even California and- has been, California in general has been pushing, like, to be more of a film state, like, across the board, not just mm-hmm. L.A. County, but, like, the whole state being more yeah. friendly to to film. And, and London is shooting, like, most of everything yeah. as well. Toronto like have- is huge on, on that kind of... Yeah. All the Spider-Man movies are still all shot in New York. So, I'm like, there's those kind of things. Like, you can't fake, you know, the Times time Square shot. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Corey, Josh? Josh, go Oh, ahead. no, I'm, 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 in the, I'm in the same uh, board where I just, I think that, I think as we do move forward, and I think with recent events with, with Georgia, I do think that there's going to be even more of an opening of, States trying to figure out tax things, tax savings for film crews and stuff like that to just to grow more more interest in in filming there in those it's, locations. It's, I think the tough thing is also just with optics, right? Like I was watching this thing with Jackie Chan talking about like China's film industry is like way bigger than America's actually. But it says that America is all about making money. And where like uh, China's all about making product. India's film industry is pretty big too. They're isn't exploding. It? Yeah. But like we, then we also have like BBC that make yeah. I think And they've grown a lot over the past like decade. Like BBC has become even their quality. Like they, yeah. you used to watch a BBC show and be like, when was this film? Like nineteen ninety two? And you're like, oh, oh 2009. Okay, <laughs> cool. I, I I think also that like the quality of show. I mean, we talked about Peaky Blinders and we've talked about Luther, yeah. we talked about all Sherlock, these shows that uh, like have yeah. like phenomenal like reach in America. And so it's a matter of like, you know, the little bit of the globalization thing. But just even like a small smidgen on top is like TikTok is becoming a really big thing for Well, creators. that's what I was gonna talk about, like not necessarily new places they're going to find a film, which, like Tom said, they kind of already are. Uh, But I think a lot of people during this pandemic especially have just kind of decided to make their own stuff and really fallen in love with doing so. Um, And so I think the... Well, I don't think the medium of of high-quality film like like, uh, the BBC is taking that route of just improving quality. People are accepting stories told now uh, within the format of, uh, you know, a portrait mode or, or... uh, um, sorry, portrait uh, framing. Yeah. And we're seeing that more and more and more. Uh, yeah. And I, like, let's say like this. We've all, us three here, um, have been working at least four years on our own degrees and our own craft and creating stuff. During 2020, there are people who are in India that have, that literally overnight got 30 million followers on TikTok and it's completely pulled them out of like living in slums to like yep. actually being able to afford like healthcare for their families. So like the the power of where media and storytelling can go, that's really going to yeah. start changing. And like we're already seeing it now with like TikTokers and X Viners and Instagrammers who are getting like star credit to their to their name and being added to films. So it's it's crazy. I mean, and you also have shows like um, like Staged with David Tennant and Michael Sheen, and huge stars have been on it. And it's basically like a show via Zoom. It's so like, good. It it is really so really good. good but she started with them making fun of each other on it, and then became this thing. Yeah, and you have like Fraggle Rock. No, not Fraggle Rock. I'm sorry. No, yeah, Fraggle Rock. Yeah, when Fraggle the Rock. Yeah. First started, they were like, "Here is all of the here's all the technology that you need, and the puppeteers are at home doing mm-hmm. these doing these things." So I mean, it's like. If anything, like this has opened up a massive, I don't want to say freedom because it's not the right word, but it's its opened up a huge space opportunity. for opportunity and, and for confidence and confidence to make some, like 
even just from us, just to take it from a personal standpoint, if you look at our videos from the beginning of the pandemic to the end, like, not the end, but where we are now, uh, of the change and how mm-hmm. we've been able to adopt and adapt. And I think that that's been the whole, that's been the whole thing where it's like, well, how do we do this? How do we continue to do this? Right. And still produce high quality content. I think it's, if anything, it's just opened a huge opportunity and much bigger things to be able to be made. I next, agree. Question, next question? Yeah. Yeah. Next uh, question. This one's from uh, Black Diablo Mamba. Uh, the new Mortal Kombat movie is coming out. Which character do you feel that you harmonize with? Um, off that movie, I have no idea. Um, Always in, Scorpion. <laughs> uh, in, in real life, as a kid, I was a big Sub Zero fan. But as of course a, you were. And, and but growing up, it's a Scorpion fan all day, um, because he's the one that's been given the character development. <laughs> um, I mean, also as a kid though, Liu Kang is it's Liu Kang. It's, it's Liu Kang. Uh, Can't be mad about Liu Kang. I I don't know a lot about Mortal Kombat except to say just I was say all, Scorpion. I was no. gonna say Scorpion. Yeah, yeah. I just it's not a unique yeah. answer, but it's the best answer. <laughs> well, with with the games in recent recent years, Raiden's been like a real big one for me because he's the yeah. one that holds like, oh god, I messed up the timeline. I have to fix it. And you're like, oh my, my god. One of my um, one Raiden of my Fallout my crew favorite. was was explaining to me like the whole like backstory between Sub Zero and Scorpion, and I was like, there's backstory. Oh, tons, there's dude. lore. I knew Y'all, nothing. <laughs> I uh, I did play through on my stream. I played through the story mode of Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, 11, right? The yeah, I think one. so. Uh, great fucking story. Great writing. Great acting. Well done. Uh, <laughs> next question? Yeah. Uh, sure. Next one is from uh, Town of the Dragon. Me. How do you feel about Jensen Ackles being Batman in the upcoming Batman movie? Finally. So yeah. for for those who are listening, this is uh, not a live action movie, but this is um, the Long Halloween, which we actually covered on part our, one. Yeah, on our on our, on our podcast, um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be part one, which is PG thirteen, and then part two is going to be rated R. A uh, uh, that makes sense. Say, a I just want to say two things. Good for him. I'm so excited. Like Jensen Ackles, seeing interviews with him and all that kind of stuff, he just seems like a good dude. I'm Batman. And, and the fact that, like, the boys, like him being in the boys, like, I'm always excited to see actors. It's kind of like seeing Daniel Radcliffe in different things. You know, Jensen Ackles has been supernatural for 15 plus years. And it's like, I'm really excited to see him in other things. He was almost on that Fraser life. Yeah. <laughs> Playing Fraser Crane for 20 years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I liked him a lot in um, Under the Red Hood, which Josh, you have not watched yet, right? Oh man, it's so good! It's so. Have you watched it, Josh? No. Okay, well, I, I, this I'm a terrible person. Oh, ask. So like, it's it, it, well, I'm just saying it's good. It's really good. And so when you see that, it's nice as a progression because he he plays Jason Todd who's going against um, Bruce Greenwood's uh, Batman, which I think Bruce Greenwood's Batman is also really, really good. Uh, he's probably like my second favorite. Next uh, to Conroy. Vo- voice, yeah. Next to Kevin Conroy. Um, but yeah, and then you have Jensen Ackles, and he's playing Jason Todd, but now he gets to be the Batman. I'm like, I'm here for it. He's still yeah, like my- I still want him in a live action. Red yeah, Hood. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still wanting that. Um, but uh, cool. Uh, next question. Yeah. Josh got sad because the the Twitch. Said, Come, <laughs> Twitch. On, <man. laughs> Come on, man! Come on, man! Don't don't uh, give him guff. He'll he'll, he'll we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, There's so much uh, shit to watch, y'all. Yeah, we'll do it. Let's a whole do uh, two more questions. Two, two more, more questions. questions. Okay. Um. So this one's from Zell, and it's one we've answered before. So if we can do it in like a a most liquefied version, um, what advice would you give someone who wanting to start a podcast? I feel like we should do a podcast episode of how to start a podcast. We get asked this a lot. Yeah, which is I yeah. think nice. I think that's yeah. like how most actors or directors feel. It's like they get asked the you know that question a lot. But I think I think honestly we should just do a whole how to make a podcast podcast. Um, but one piece of advice from each person. Um, uh, I would say remember th- that it's a show. 
and it needs to be entertainment in a sense. Um, you know, I think uh, a lot of people think that, yeah, I'll just get on the mic and just start talking and people will will enjoy what I'm saying. But there there has to be a performance side of it uh, a little bit. And it doesn't have to be laid on like, hey, welcome to da 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 da, you know? But Not like me. Not like me. <laughs> there is, there. you have to remember what you're creating is entertainment and and that should be part of the forefront of all, all thoughts of the things you do. Is this entertaining? Is this something that I can sell? Josh? Yeah. Um, my number one, number one thing that I always think to say is what is your mentality about it? Um, because the thing that I see a lot in the podcasting realm is that people start a podcast and what is it? Is it a business or is it a hobby? Because those are two very different trajectories. Yep. Because if it's a hobby, chill, bro. But if it's a business, you're asking the questions all the time. Like what Corey said, is this topic even entertaining? Is this topic important? Should we do the season of this or should we do this? And when you treat it as a business, you are much more, um, a lot more thought goes into it in terms of uh, strategy, uh, strategy, content planning, because you're thinking of how to do the thing. Yeah. Um, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, my bit of advice is going to be um, your hesitation is probably more detrimental than you think. Um, you need to get out and earn your scrapes. Um, get it wrong before you get it right. Um because a lot of the times you're going to be guesstimating before you even do a thing. And you should always constantly ask yourself those questions. But don't stop yourself from being like, oh, should I work with other people before I just do my own thing? Just work with other people. Just, you know, collaborate, you know, put the put the episode out, do the thing. Um, if you get called out, you get called out. But you have to be able to do that. You can't be paralyzed by like, should I? Would I? How do I? The audio isn't perfect. The Oh, I said um here, and it's like you want you're you're in more dire risk of getting um, drowned out by everyone else than you are of making a splash, and that's just to put it very nicely. Yeah. Um, so you gotta have the courage to go out there and do it. Um, was what I say? That's good. Um, last question. Last then. question. Um, so now that oh, this is from Talent the Dragon. So Shout now out. that every major nerd group or ma every other major nerd group has started a D and D slash other tabletop campaign, <laughs> when is Nerd Ons going to happen? Another favorite question I think that gets asked, um, which is good. I think it's it's in the, written in the stars of like people people look to us for these kind of things. We have a couple seeds planted. I'll put it that way. Uh, yeah, so a couple seeds without spoiling anything. A couple seeds have been planted. Yeah. Uh, now we're just seeing which one grows. Maybe we should just be toxic and just have it on a paywall. <laughs> there you go. That's what we'll do. Yeah, that works, Tom. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's something that, yeah, you are not alone. We want to do it. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a, it's a little bit of time and it's a little bit of uh, coordination. So mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure we do it and give you guys the best version of it, or at least the best way we can give. You know, we'll obviously get better as time goes on, but, you know. We don't want any uh, Bush League stuff <laughs> coming from us. But I mean, you know, uh, and, and we appreciate everyone's been patient and holding on. Coming once. soon. Yeah. yeah. Coming soon. To a computer to screen near you. Uh, That's yeah. it, man. That is this week's questions. update. Everybody thank you, everyone. at home. Yes. Thank you so much for listening or watching or however you are taking this in. Uh, thank you to the Twitch chat for joining us live. Uh, thank you for sending in your questions. All of that good stuff. Thank you. Uh, if you are new to Nerd On, check out our website, nerdon.tv. It has all of the information on everything that we do. Uh, all of our social medias, all of our YouTube channels, our streaming stuff. Check it out, nerdon.tv. Uh, I mentioned the Nerd On Nation before, but I'm going to mention it uh, and really shout it out right now. Do check out that Nerd On Nation. Consider joining it. It does allow us to keep growing, to keep being the best that we can be, to keep upgrading our content. 
It's just a, and it's a really dope community to be a part of. So check it out. It is powered by Patreon, nerdon.tv backslash Patreon. Um, check out that Discord. Really cool community over there too. Keeps growing. Lots of fun conversations from film to comic books to food to all sorts of different stuff. Check it out. Um, yeah, that's nerdon.tv backslash Discord. Rate and review wherever you listen. Share us with your friends, your family, your enemies. Do the thing. Uh, but yeah, that has been this week's update. You know the drill. As always, nerd on. Nerd on. Nerd on.